Hello, everybody. Scott Golden here with the Raw Report for the 29th of November, 2021. Uh, Raw's main event was a week ending, and um, anyway, so show recap begins with Seth Rollins entering, starting the show, announcers run down the card a little bit. Rollins said people might expect him to be in a bad mood after what happened last week, but he's in a great mood because he has some news He'd be facing Big E for the WWE title at day one in Atlanta, which I guess is the New Year's Day pay-per-view. It would be the day of the, the first day of the new year and the first day of a new era. Didn't hear any have an era. Anyway, Finn Balor interrupts. He said uh, that he charges the ring to attack uh, Balor, or attack Rollins, rather. Balor clotheslines Rollins and himself over the barricade and... And tosses him around ringside. Rollins comes back briefly, but Balor gives him a sling blade on the outside before hitting him with the steel steps. Rollins gets hit with the steel steps, tells the referee to go ahead and start the contest. Uh, Seth Rollins defeats Finn Balor in 841. I remember when they were battling over the uh, Univer Universal Championship, Raw Championship, World Championship, one of the main championships about five or six years ago, and it's sad how far this has fallen. Balor hits a flip dive and then goes to the break for a few seconds, and they're less than 10 minutes into the show, and they're going to a commercial break already. Balor's in control until Rollins stops him from attempting the Coupe de Grasse and hits a superplex into a Falcon Arrow. Spot, spot, spots for a near fall, and then Rollins tries a frog splash, but Balor gets his knees up and uses a cradle for near fall. Balor then comes back with a foot stop for two, and Rollins responds with a sling blade and a super kick. Also for a two count, Balor then avoids the stomp and follows up with another sling blade and a shotgun dropkick. Rollins then avoids the coupe de grace again and trade strikes. Balor then sets up a reverse DDT, but Rollins pokes him in the eye and the ref doesn't see this. Rollins then follows with a back elbow and a curve stomp for the pinfall victory. Poke to the eye is now used as a major run. A uh, good match for the time they had, although the finish seems lame. Austin Theory approaches Vince McMahon in his office backstage. They shake hands, and Theory asks how he's doing. Vince hated the question because he knew nobody actually wanted to hear the answer. Vince invites Theory to stay in his office tonight so they can watch the show together. Theory's nervous initially, but it seems excited to hear that. His excitement didn't last um, when Vince threatens to kill him if he steals from him again. Raw Women's Championship contract signing. Why do we have contract signings for nearly everything these days? Becky Lynch takes credit for Liv Morgan getting her first contract signing and fighting f for her last week. Lynch then warns her that one punch wasn't going to be enough to beat Lynch. Wondered what Morgan would do when she finally got her shot. Lynch already signs the contract and invited Morgan to do the same. Sonya Deville announced that the match would happen next week, and they... And they uh, Piped in some fake cheering because no one cares about Liv Morgan because they haven't exactly done much with this. Uh, Lynch made fun of the Long Island crowd for being upset that they don't get the match this week. She then also makes a dig at New York Islanders for not having a win yet in the new arena. Uh, Morgan tells her to shut up. Morgan plays a clip of the emotional Lynch interview following Survivor Series where she spoke about the win, how great it felt to be in sharing these moments with someone she cared for. Uh, and, of course, that meeting her husband, Seth Rollins, mentioned that he, uh, they almost died in a car crash. Morgan mocks her for crying after all this time. That Lynch mocked her for the same. Morgan then said Lynch must hate when she became w what she became. Morgan threatens to attack her right now, but DeVille gets in the way. Lynch then tells her the interview showed her emotion following a big win, something Morgan would know nothing about. Lynch requested a 10-woman tag match earlier tonight, and DeVille showed the teams uh, she'd come up with. Morgan accepts the challenge, and this is just time filler. Lynch is obviously the heel here, and at least they're trying. Uh, Riddle approaches Randy Orton, surprised that Orton isn't dressed like him. Riddle said this is Freaky Friday last week, and they thought it would be awesome if they remade a movie, if he remade a movie with them. Orton appreciated Riddle was doing, but he needed a, to be ruthless to stay t 10 steps ahead of everyone else. Riddle then asked Orton to close his eyes, and he obliged. Riddle put a wig on his head 
Riddle then saw him, uh, Orton saw himself in the mirror and told him to remove the wig, and he does. To continue to be an entertaining act, although I'm assuming the payoff is a feud between the two somewhere down the line that will fall flat because it'll go on too long. Randy Orton and Riddle defeated Dolph Ziggler Robert Roode to retain the Raw Tag Team Championships 1027. Good enough match. Roode and Ziggler take control before the break. Attacking R RK Bro on the outside, Orton hits a back suplex, and Riddle comes in after a heart tag, hits some suplexes of his own, and a senton on both men. Riddle then gives Roode a draping DDT. Orton is happy for this. Riddle tags Orton back in, and they set up for the RKOs, but they both get countered. Ziggler gives Orton a zigzag for near fall. Orton dodges and super kicks, gives Ziggler an RKO for the pinfall win. Match is fine. Crowd pops appropriately. Kevin Owens approaches Rollins in the back. Owens informs him that he that if he beat Big E tonight, he'd be added to the title match at day one. Per Adam Pierce's instructions, Rollins laughed because he didn't have he didn't believe him. Owens said to go ask Pierce. Edge enters the top of the, the top of the hour second hour segment. Uh, Rollins approaches Pierce and tells him that Owens what Owens just said. Pierce said Owens was in fact lying. Rollins is relieved, and then we go to the Edge segment. Edge said that he's glad to be back. The last time we saw him, he beat Rollins inside Hell in a Cell, and now Rollins is the number one contender. He admitted Rollins deserved to be. And he says he's operating on a whole other level right now. Edge is ready to fight someone new and was a long, there were a long list of candidates. AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Damian Priest, and Big E are the candidates at Edge list. The Miz and Maurice interrupted. They showed clips of Miz on Dancing with the Stars. Miz is annoyed that Edge received that big return announcement and press release. Miz wondered if all Edge's career was now returning. For a big moment after injuries and retirements, Miz was happy to announce that Maurice was back. However, Miz is annoyed Edge didn't mention his name on the list of potential opponents. Edge mocks him for dressing as a genie on Dancing with the Stars after Maurice talked about how great he was. Edge also mocks him for not coming close to winning. Miz yells at the fans for at not voting for him. Edge then knows that Miz... Uh, was targeting him because it put him on the main picture. He prompted the crowd to chant, Miz sucks, and Miz said he didn't need Edge's help to be in the main event. He said he was uh, the WWE champion eight months ago, while Edge hadn't been champion in a long time. Miz is surprised Edge has suggested Edge should have stayed home. And then Edge admitted... He can't fight for much longer, but there's a reason that everyone in the back wanted to be across the ring from him. Ed said Miz spends too much time complaining. He credited Miz for getting very far, coming from tough enough, and did in fact beat John Cena at WrestleMania. He said Miz was even used to getting cheap heat on the other show, and that's a reference to AEW, one would assume. Uh, that's a good... That got buzzed from the crowd because... Anybody who cares about wrestling cares about AEW as an alternative to WWE at this point. Edge spoke about how hard he worked just to get back here when Miz was just using it as a launching point for his next endeavor. While his tag partner got fired, Miz also got upset, so he took off his shades. Edge challenged him to a fight. Miz acted like... He wanted to fight, but he left. Sarah then comes and asks AJ Styles and almost about the Street Profits using a fire extinguisher last week. Styles wore shades because he claimed he couldn't see. After getting sprayed in the face with a fire extinguisher, he warned the Street Profits that they were going to get, get burned. Styles acted like he couldn't see throughout the interview, almost then stopped him from bumping into stuff. This was horrible. Anyway... Street Profits defeat Alpha Academy 315. Why even have them get dressed for this? Styles joins on commentary for the match. He tried to interfere, but Montez Ford knocks him aside. Ford gives Gable a frog splash, and the Street Profits come up with a quick win. Styles then remains on the ground after the match and looks up at almost wondering what just happened. Styles come across like a uh, comedy guy during the segment. What a waste of the end of his career. 
Uh, Rollins then approaches Owens. Rollins acted like a child and said, liar, liar, pants on fire. Owens said he wasn't lying. If he beats Big E tonight, he gets added to the match. Rollins laughs as Owens walks away. Um, anyway, Damian Priest defeats Apollo Crews. Commander Aziz retains the U.S. and retains the U.S. Championship 827. Uh, they go to a break about 60 to 90 seconds into the match. Aziz distracts Priest and Cruz, wipes him out with a flying knee strike. Aziz then gets involved again, and they go to the break. The ref kicks him out. Priest then charges in like a cartoon and fires up before hitting a choke slam and a reckoning for the pinfall win. Um, this was not a stellar match. Anyway, Dominic and Rey Mysterio defeat Cedric Alexander, Sheldon Benjamin, 302. Mysterio's hit double. 619 and Dominic pins Alexander after a frog splash. Uh, Cedric Alexander would do much better in another company. Ray and Dominic need the win, so it served its purpose. Alexander and ben Benjamin, um, I don't know, just are, are there. Uh, there's, there's a SmackDown recap as we go into hour number three. Ten women tag team match. Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Nikki Ash, and 24-7 champion Dana Brooke defeats. World Women's Champion Becky Lynch, tag team champions uh, Carmella and Queen Zelina, Tamina, and Dewdrop 1936. Yes, 20 minutes of this complete, utter cluster mess. Uh, a few minutes in, Belair gets Tamina up for the KOD. Tamina gets pulled out of the ring and... Um, Everybody kind of stands around like they're waiting to go to break. Dewdrop is in control over Nikki when we come back. Nikki dodges a leg drop by Lynch and quickly runs away, goes to her corner and gets there too quickly and stops abruptly because it isn't time to make the tag. Carmella cuts her off, but Nikki makes a tag off to Ripley. Ripley comes in, hits Carmella in the face before knocking others off the apron. Everyone's trading a bunch of moves. Belair gives Tamina a glam slam. Carmella escapes a riptide, and a super kick is hit by Carmella for a two count. After a second break, uh, Dana Brooke comes in, makes a tag. Morgan hits Tamina with strikes and a code breaker. Lynch breaks up the cover. Nikki then wipes out Lynch with a crossbody to the outside before Dewdrop knocks Nikki out with a close. Nikki down with a clothesline. Zelina and Carmella shows Brooks and shoves her to the outside. Group of bodies, and then ultimately uh, look for anything considering Brooks coming. Tamina then gives Morgan a super kick for near fall. Morgan then follows up with an oblivion for the pinfall win. Lynch attacks Morgan after the match. Few others brawl around, and that's that. The match should not have gone nearly 20 minutes. There's another segment with Vince and Austin Theory. Vince explained to him that. Uh, there is an element of surprise in things. Veer is coming. Uh, they play a video package for Bobby Lashley. Kevin Patrick asked Big E if Owen's stipulation added any pressure. Big E said no and walks away. Comes back because he knows Patrick wanted more. Big E says he fears no man and he fears no Kevins. He gives Kevin Patrick a look as if this is supposed to be funny. Big E planned on finally writing, ridding himself of the uh, scourge that is Kevin Owens, and he faced Rollins one-on-one -on -one for the title. And then we go to uh, Theory telling Vince he had a great time tonight. Vince asked what he learned. Theory said to expect the unexpected. Vince seemed happy with this. He's going to show him out, but slapped him in the face instead. Vince said Theory had a lot to learn. Then we go to the main event. Uh, Rollins joins on commentary for this. Kevin Owens defeats Big E in a non-title match, 1636 via DQ. Owens falls to the outside. Rollins is being annoying, so Owens slaps him. And then Big E gives Owens a splash on the apron. Owens gives a DDT on the steel steps. Ouch. After the break, Owens hits a superplex for near fall. Big E uh, hits a, a trifecta or a trio of... Belly to belly suplexes. Owens gets his knees up on a splash. Owens then tries a senton. Big E gets the knees up on that too. Follows with a splash for near fall once again. Big E tries to spear him through the ropes, but Owens gets the knees up followed with a cannonball for near fall. They trade right hands. 
until Owens hit a super kick for near fall. Biggie responded with an STO for two count, and Owens comes back with a pop up power bomb for his own near fall. Owens then starts to make his way back to the top, but decided to attack Rollins. He attempts a stunner, but Biggie um, has it blocked. Owens hits a super kick on Biggie and comes right back with a clothesline. Rollins then takes the bait and attacks Owens for the DQ. Crowd groans as Owens gives Big E the curve stomp. They announced Owens was the winner by DQ, which meant he'd be added to the match. Owens laughs at Rollins, and Rollins freaks out. Um, and Raw is yet another cluster mess. Anyway, we'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 